Hi, it's Vex, and today we want to go over the Commander Top 10. That's right, Top 10 cards I have for Commander. Um, so this is interesting, this is like a, a, a set with reprints. Uh, so I didn't include any reprints, all new cards um, printed in Commander Legends, so it's like half the set only. And this is my Top 10. Uh, so it's, I actually really like Commander Legends for the fact that uh, they didn't introduce like mega staple cards, which I was uh, really afraid of. Except for, you know, of course, our friend, the Jeweled Lotus here. Um, but besides that, they in in introduced very interesting cards, good cards for decks, but no staples, no like incredible auto includes, uh, except for, you know, the lands. But, um, so let's go through our top 10. Jeweled Lotus, Jeweled Lotus is not in our top 10. I call it the dishonorable mention because Wizards printed this card just as a cash grab. Um, after thinking about it, I have not played against it yet because obviously we kind of kind of soft banded in our trade group already. It's not as powerful as you think. It is ultra powerful um, for certain commanders like uh, Grand Arbor, like Augustine the Fourth. If you play at turn one, you just lock the game up. No one can play anything for a while. So um, Jewel Lotus is powerful, but uh, I do have a discussion about the power level of Jewel Lotus and do some sample hands. I think a lot of people talk about how powerful it is, but never actually goldfish with it. So I want um, see if I have time to actually do those videos between all these crazy deck techs I've been trying to do. So dishonorable mention uh, didn't didn't need to be printed uh, according to I, I believe uh, Josh from the command zone. You know, was testing with this and re requested not for it to not to be printed because it just doesn't add value to the format. And I I, I agree, but it creates hype. People want to open it. So Wizards did what they needed to do to make money. So Jeweled Lotus, dishonorable mention. Another honorable mention, I think a fun card here, is Wheel of Misfortunes. Uh, it's very hard to figure out what it does because it has a wall of text. So basically, um, everybody secretly picks a number, reveals a number. The person with the highest number takes that much damage that they picked. Everybody except for the person with the lowest number gets to draw seven cards. So the person with the highest number gets to draw seven cards, but takes you know that much damage. So you want to go high enough where you get to draw cards, but not high enough where you get smacked in the face with Wheel Wheel of Misfortunes. Wheel of Misfortunes is really fun to have, so I really enjoy it. So it goes right side up as honorable mention. Another honorable mention is a Chroma's Will. It does cost four. It's not as cheap as Teferi's Protection. Um, so let's read what it does. Choose one if you control your commander. As you cast a spell, you may choose both. Creatures you control gain flying, vigilance, double strike until end of turn. So against very good evasion and very powerful damage output with flying, double strike, and vigilance so you can block. Or creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors until end of turn. So if you, it's extremely powerful if you do have your commander out. Um, if you don't, you, you can use it. Usually, usually I would use the indestructible mode, protection from all colors, like the Teferi's protection mode for your creatures only, not you, for your creatures. Um, but if you have both modes, you are like almost unblockable. Um, your creatures are indestructible, flying, vigilance, double strike, and lifelink. So that is incredible. It turns your creatures into a chroma, essentially. So it's very good right there. All right, let's go to our top 10. So let's just do this here. Let's see, uh, 10 style. And I, I, you know, I cheat a little bit. This is more than 10 cards. There's some cycles in here, obviously, and some other cards. So uh, they also play this on the command zone. Tavis Zet, Sat, Tavis Sat, Doom of Fools. So it's really cool because it has partner uh, and can be your commander right line right here. So it's got incredible power. So this is the first time they've ever done um, partner um, Planeswalker commanders. So it's really cool. What Tavis Set does, you know, plus two, create two, zero, one black thrall creature tokens. So throw back to these uh, thralls from early days of magic. Uh, you may sacrifice another creature, or, or sorry, plus one. You may sacrifice another creature or planeswalker. If you do, draw two cards. Then draw another card if you sacrifice a permit, if, if sacrifice permit was a commander. So essentially, you could play it with uh, another one of our cards down here. Rograk, son of Rograk. Um and sack it and get, it, get like a third card for a plus one. Uh, and minus 10, this is incredible, it's so cool. Gain control of all commanders, put all commanders from the command zone onto the battlefield under your control. 
So I did hear the corner case is that if you have exactly 10 loyalty, minus 10 Tavish Sot, put it in the command zone, his ability will bring him back from the command zone onto the battlefield. So that's really cool. So doing negative 10 with him at exactly at 10 is even better because it resets him back to four. So very good card here. And, and partner command, uh, in, like infinite flexibility. You can play your two color partners and such. All right, number nine. I really like this one. Rograk, son of Ro Rogog. So it's interesting, it costs zero, a red color identity, zero one. First strike, menace, trample. It does all this, but doesn't actually do damage. So you have to either enhance it, uh, Voltron it up, use it with a, a chroma, the white a chroma from the set with partner. Again, it's partner, it's really cool. Like you could partner right with, with Tavis set right here. Uh, bring Ro Rograk in and plus one, draw three cards and put Rograk back in the command, um, command zone, play two. So this is the essentially the cheapest uh, legendary creature ever printed for zero mana and it has partners so you can partner with other other um other uh, commanders like Thrasios or Timna or something like this with Timna is pretty good you could bring it out eventually cast Timna attack draw that card make up the card advantage of having you know um, a zero mana zero one of course he has partners so you have an extra card array in the command zone number eight Kadama of the East Tree you can see the the um, the theme here is all these very very powerful partners. Like I think Kadama is a part is a good a card by by itself because it's a spirit, um, but it's a really good card as a partner. So it's four uh, green green. Reach whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control. If it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana costs from your hand onto the battlefield. I actually thought it would just say lesser, but it says equal or lesser. So. It's, it's very powerful. So if you play six drop, you get another free six drop from your hand. So you, you get save mana. Again, mana uh, saving cards are extremely good. I believe uh, if you had some kind of bounce land, you, you can go infinite with Tago with the rock guy. You would uh, play a land, Tago would make a rock, uh, but your land would trigger. Your land would trigger, Tago would trigger. You bring your land back, the rock would enter a battlefield, put land back on, trigger Tago. With, you can have Kadama on the battlefield, but a very powerful commander goes in a multiple multitude of decks, and I think I think once people figure out the most optimal commander for Kadama, they'll they'll kind of not break it, but have insane good value where you're just playing cards like uh, cheating on mana over and over again, be able to bounce things, cheat, bounce things, cheat. So this card will I, I feel I feel will be broken someday. All right, number seven. Is the whole cycle, the court cycle here. What I love about uh, EDH and the mechanic of Monarch, so I mean not EDH, but the um, mechanic of Monarch for EDH, it's so powerful, it's so fun, like it forces attacking, it forces the game to move on, it make, gives you card advantage. So for each of these court cards, there's uh, you know, either ETB, you become the Monarch, so there. Uh, the cool, uh, and the cool part about these core cards is if, if you, you you get something at the beginning of your upkeep, but if you're the mark, you get something like really, really enhanced. For instance, you get a white spirit token at the beginning of your upkeep, but if you're in the monarch, you get four four white angel. Uh, Core of Cunning is really good for mill players because you know it's it's fun to mill. People love milling. Uh, uh, beginning of upkeep you mill two cards. Uh, any any number of players mill two cards. But if you're monarch, each of those mills ten. So you know. Again, this is a weird one because you want to, uh, uh, if, you, if you're playing a pure mill deck, you're not really attacking, so it's hard to get a Monarch back. But if you're playing like a Rumi or something where you want to attack, but you also want to mill, Quarter Cutting is pretty fun in that deck. Quarter of Ambition, uh, lose three life. Each, each one lose three life, you get Monarch. Uh, they lose six life unless they discard two cards, you know. Lose three life unless they discard a card. So it doubles the effect here. Uh, Core of Ire deals two damage any target, but if you mark seven damage uh, to that player permanent instead, bam. Core of Bounty um, again lets you cheat lands into play, but if you're in the monarch, you may put a creature or land on from your hand to the battlefield. So this is very, very powerful. Can cheat on a high amount of mana, like throw an Eldrazi right onto uh, the battlefield if you're still the monarch. It's very good in green. So the court cycle, amazing cards. Here, 
number six here, Hall Breacher. Right here, again, this is really good in Legacy. They've had the uh, Echo of Aeons Hall Breacher deck uh, for use in there. But this is, um, it's one cheaper than Notion Thief and one less color than Notion Thief. So now you're just committed only in blue. So if I have a niv Mizet wheel deck, I don't, I, I could, where I couldn't run Notion Thief, now I could run Hull Breacher. Uh, it's really cool. Again, card draw is very important in Commander and this kind of like makes it riskier because it's because you can flash it out, make make them lose a card draw, especially Brainstorm, flash this on a Brainstorm. They have to put two from the hand back on top of their library while you, you make three treasures. So, extremely good here. I, I really like cards like this that kind of like um, don't do the commander thing, but punish the thing that a lot of people do in commander, like card draw and stuff, uh, which, you know, kind of, you, you got to watch out for, because a lot of people are just always taking advantage of like landfall, because not a lot of people punish lands. Um, not a lot of people punish drawing cards, like they don't have Narset. Uh, and then sometimes you got to keep, keep those people in check. So Hull Breacher, excellent card here. All right, we're moving to the top five. Get rid of that dice here, five. And these are two cards right here. Uh, Commander's Plate and War Room. And what Commander's Plate does, the equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and has protection from each color that's not in your Commander's Color Identity. Uh, so there's very few cards that says the word Color Identity, like Commander's Tower, um, Arcane Saint, and stuff like that. But the cool part about this is it's really cheap equipment, uh, cost one, equip Commander for three mana, or equip for five. But essentially, if you're playing a colors deck, colorless deck, you essentially have protection from all colors. But this really helps out monocolor decks, definitely mono white equipment decks like SRAM, which I keep mentioning. I'll, I'll do a deck tech one day, but really helps in the monocolor decks. And I think Wizards has pushed multicolor so hard, like with Golos, with Kenrith, with, you know, Corval, Tulane, like with the new Obeka card, that playing more colors is just so easy because the mana base is so easy now with the Triomes, with Fetch Lands, with Dual Lands, with Shock Lands, that we. I, I love the way that they're, they're, you know, essentially here they punish card draw. They're punishing having, they're, they're not punishing, they're rewarding having less colors and playing like a Kozlak colorless deck. Um, so it's really cool. And War Room does essentially the same. It's a land that adds one. Pay three mana, tap, pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity, draw a card. Again, it's colorless deck, you pay zero life, which is amazing. Uh, in a one monocolor deck, you pay one life. You know, pay three, tap, pay one life. Very excellent rate to draw a card. Very good mono white. Again, helps you with card draw is a land and uh, and does very little damage. And if you play this in a five color deck, you gotta pay five life to draw a card. It's really not worth it. Um, but as you can see, it's really helping these mono colored decks. So that's our number five here. Number four, as I kept mentioning, helps. It really these help in mono white a lot. Keeper the Accord. I, I think it's very good mono white because I I feel like every time I'm playing a game of EDH, somebody is ramping with green, always ramping with green and always doing that constantly. Um, so this helps catch up. I think this is really good. Let's read it real quick here. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player, so the player um, turn is, controls more creatures than you, create a one one white soldier creature token. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a basic playing card, planes card, put it into the battlefield tap, shuffle your library. So it catch, catches you up on creatures, it catches you up on lands. Somebody's always ramping, and maybe you have two landfall decks or two people playing Kadamas Reaches Cultivates all the time. This really helps your mono white deck catch up or your Boros deck catch up. I don't recommend playing with green, because obviously if you're green, you might as well ramp instead of playing this card. Um, or you play green white like Azura's deck, like those decks that don't have the type of land ramp. And the cool part about it is your your mana rocks don't count, so so you play a lot of mana rocks, and then you still can ramp with uh, Keeper of the Cord. So I, I really like this card. Okay, so I didn't say I, I said uh, a lot of the cards weren't like auto includes in decks, except for these cards. I think these cards um, are auto includes um, in essentially any deck that can play them because they're so good. They're the battle bond type lands. Otherwise known as, I call it, I think the, the crowd lands from battle bond. So they just finished the cycle. The battle bond lands are really good. It was annoying missing some. Essentially what happens is these lands enter the battlefield tapped unless you have two or more opponents. So really good in commander, does nothing. Uh, it's really bad in, in 1v1. Uh, 
So essentially most of the time enters the battlefield untapped, you get your color fixing. As I said, um, commander, the color fixing of the commander is actually every year it gets much better and better. So these are these really help, but you know, for budget players, get these now. I, I know they're not as cheap, like maybe like eight, nine, seven, and eight eight bucks or something. But get these now, these will go up just like the Battle Bond lands. Um, very good. That's why I do like these the cards like Commander's Plate and War Room that reward having less colors. Uh, Wizard is printing these at um, these lands. So hopefully uh, they print more of these cards that reward less colors instead of constantly printing more and more cards that just uh, make it easier to play uh, more colors. So those, those are very good there. That's a number, oh, I didn't even go down. Number three here. Number two card. Sakashima of a thousand faces. I think I said that right. I know I said it wrong a million million times, but Sakashima of a thousand faces. So this is three in a blue. You may have Shak Sakashima of a thousand faces enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima of a thousand faces other ability. Its other ability is the legend rule doesn't apply to permanents you control. Partner. So essentially. The cool thing about this card is it essentially allows you to have two of the same partner uh, in in a in a way, right? Or two of the same legendary creature. Uh, for instance, let's say Vile Smasher. If you always want to have two Vile Smashers um, in play, when you cast a spell, you get the you know point damage at two different people. Again, the I, I, I reason why I think this card is so powerful is essentially. If you have a partner commander like say Tavisat right here and you want another Tavisat, Sakashima right there. You can copy it. Or I mean I don't I don't know why you would ever copy Rograk, but you could. Or Kadama. So you have two copies of Kadama. The cool part about it is this is Sakashima has the ability legend rule doesn't apply to permits you, you control. So imagine having two, two of these on the battlefield and playing a, uh, a clone, right? Uh, so you would clone the Sakashima with additional legend rule doesn't apply clause on it. So you have three of the same legend. So you have like, a, you know, hypothetically three Vile Smashers. So it's, it's really cool. The possibilities are infinite. Uh, I do want to make a Sakashima Vile Smasher deck because I keep talking about that partner pairing. I love pointing random damage at people. It's really fun. I have a Vile Smasher, a casual Vile Smasher Thrasios deck. Not not competitive, casual. Plays big spells and aims damage at there, but I do want to make a Sakashima in Vile Smasher deck. That'd be cool. I think number one card here, no surprise because you haven't seen it, Opposition Agent. So let's read Opposition Agent. Two and a black. Flash. You control your opponents while they're searching their libraries. While an opponent is searching their library, they exile each card they find. You may play those cards as long as they remain exiled. And you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast them. So this is insane, right? If somebody does a Kadama's Reach, as I said above, a lot of people do ramp. Um, you, you now essentially can just stop them, take their two lands, put it to the side, and play it anytime you want. Um, very powerful, because you because it's, it's got flash. So they your opponents don't know it's coming unless you... Play with this in every deck and keep you know three mana up all the time. I like these cards because a lot of people are complaining about oh this is crazy. Tutoring in EH has gone to a point where um, it's it's reduced variance, I believe sometimes, and it's okay to get punished for doing things like like I think every natural thing that we do in Magic should have some kind of cost because if right now. Lands are too sacred, no one goes after land, so people have taken advantage of it. That's why every pod probably has a landfall deck. Every player, most players have landfall decks because of that unwritten rule where you don't destroy people's lands. Um, just like Hole Breacher, people draw cards, people do a lot of searching, commanders play, people play a lot of colors. I believe it's just fantastic to have cards like Opposition Agent, which kind of like makes you think, hey, there is a penalty for tutoring. There's a penalty for drawing lots of cards. There's, there is a there is a real penalty for having lots of colors, you know. So I think it's beneficial for the game to have these kind of cards. I know they're very powerful. I know the the blowout potential is insane, but 
again, uh, I keep forgetting to move my die down, but again, I, I like these type of cards and I, I don't think every, every deck should have them, but they, they create for interesting games. They punish you for doing very strong things. Um, so anyways, those are my top 10 with a dishonorable mention of Jeweled Lotus because it's not as powerful as, as you would think. It's okay. Um, but it does do powerful things if you do get in your, your opening hand. But Opposition Agent, I feel like a strong card. I wouldn't say it's auto include in every black deck. I, it can be an auto include in all black decks because it's very, very strong. What are your guys' top 10 from Commander Legends? Top 10 new cards from Commander Legends? Leave your answers in the description below or comment section below. Uh, if you want to support the channel, definitely give the, this channel a thumbs up. Smash the subscribe button, hit those bells, get alerted when I post a new video. That's what everybody says nowadays, right? Uh, I also have a TCG affiliate uh, link in the description below if you want to help support. It doesn't cost you any money, but I would greatly appreciate it. Helps keep the channel going, helps me acquire these crazy cards that I do uh, deck techs on. Again, helps support the channel. Um, I also have a Patreon if you want to support that way, uh, but th that's totally not necessary. I think just by watching videos, commenting, subscribing is great support enough for me so these are my top 10 what are your top 10s and as always have a wonderful day